Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure Vic Registry and Docker Engine to talk to each other securely so that they can pull and push images um, to projects in Vic Registry. I'm also going to show you how to then take those images from Vic Registry and deploy them to a virtual container host in vSphere. So quite a few things to cover, but hopefully it'll be really useful information to help you get getting started with the basics of setting up this kind of authentication. So I have a completely clean uh, install of Vic Registry here, and I have a completely clean couple of uh, Docker hosts right here, regular Docker hosts. So let's get started. The very first thing I need to do is to download um, the root certificate for this registry. The root certificate is the certificate that's going to be used by the Docker engines to uh, authenticate with this registry. So uh, it's been downloaded to my downloads folder. And here it is. What I need to do is get this onto uh, one of these Docker hosts. So let's pick this one. The simplest way for me to do this is just to cut and paste it. You can use SCP or whatever uh, means you prefer. So the important question is, where does Docker Engine expect this certificate to live? Well, it expects it to be in Etsy Docker uh, and a folder in here called certs.d. And in the certs.d folder, you need a subfolder that matches the IP address of the Vic registry. Okay, now in here, we're going to place our certificate. Okay, hopefully I've done that correctly. There's my certificate uh, that I'm hopefully going to use to authenticate with. So the way that you authenticate from Docker Engine and you'll see, sorry, if I type docker info with my fat fingers, uh, this is the docker I'm using. So now that I've created my certificate, I should be able to authenticate with the registry. So if we type docker login, which is the means for authentication, and add the registry IP address, now it's already prompting me for my username because I've tried this once already. Put in a password. Okay, I can't authenticate right now with the registry. What have I done wrong? Well, it's because I'm not actually a user in the registry yet. So I need to go and add myself as a user. Now I'm currently operating as an admin. I'm logged in as admin. Um, I'm gonna create a user for myself. Okay, so. Uh, I'm now a user. I'm not going to set myself as an administrator. So now back in my Docker engine, I should be able to log in successfully. And I can. Hooray. So I've logged in. Now what can I do now that I'm logged in? Well, can I push images to this registry now? Well, no, because I actually need to create a project to push an image to. So let's create a project. I'm going to call this project Benproj. Um, I am going to make it public for now. Now, just to be clear, a public project is a project that a user doesn't have to be a member of in order to pull images from it. And we'll, we'll see a little bit more detail about that later on. So for now, I'm going to make this public. So I've made a project, so I should now be able to push an image to the project. So let's, let's create an image. I'm going to create an image from scratch. So let's say from Debian, from Docker Hub. I'm just going to like create a file. OK, so if we build this, call it test. OK, it's going to pull down the Debian image from Docker Hub. It's going to run the command to actually just create the file in the file system. There it is. So we can now test that by doing docker run dash it test and there's my hello world file on the file system so good that works so i've now created an image which we can see in docker images now the next question is how do i push this to the registry in the project that i just created well you need to tag the image so docker tag is the way we do this i'm going to tag this image firstly 
with the IP address or the address of the, uh, the registry. I'm then going to specify the project, which is benproj. I'm going to still call it test. I'm going to specify a version, so let's say v1. Okay, so this will tag that. And if we type docker images, we'll see the tagged image. So now if I go to, uh, if I do docker push and take this same. All right, so it's not happy. So why is it not happy? What have I not done? Well, the key thing to remember is that in order to um, actually push to a project, you need to be a member of that project and you need to have the right role to be able to push. So I'm going to add myself as a member. And you can see here that there are a few different roles uh, that I can be. Um, in order to push, I need to be an admin or a developer. So I'm going to make myself a developer. Thumbs up there. We should be good. So now, now good, I can push. Now, um, <laughs> I ran through this demo a few times ahead of time. Uh, the layer already exists in there for some reason. Um, but who cares? It's pushed correctly. If we go, there we go. Um, it's The log is showing that I just pushed to this repository. If we go to, to here, we'll see, yeah, there is, um, uh, there is what I just pushed. So that's great. So now that I've pushed, let's go into a completely different Docker host and look at how I might actually pull that image. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just try pulling it. So let's just get this uh, image name, docker run dash it. Okay, is this going to work? It's not going to work. Even though my project is public, you remember I configured my project, uh, if we look at the project, so you, I configured my project to be public. I can't pull it without authenticating, and that's because we've set this um, registry up by default to only work with a secure uh, authenticated connection. So even though the project is public, I still can't pull or run the, that image without authenticating. So actually, let's create a new user. Let's go to users. Let's create a guest user. Um, in fact, let's create a George user. George is my colleague. George at, uh, it's not George at VMware.com, but it doesn't matter. George, let's call him Curious. George, he'll love that. Uh, all right. So we've now created a George user. So if I go to this second, so remember, this is a completely different Docker host. The one we were previously in was this one. This is a completely different Docker host. So if I do um, Docker login 10.1.8.68.82 and type George and type my password, Okay, what have I done wrong here? Well, remember, I need that certificate on every single Docker host that I want to uh, authenticate. So I actually have to go back over here. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, fast forward to the point at which that certificate is already created. Uh, so the magic of video. Okay, so we've created our certificate in the same way as we did on the last Docker host. And I should now be able to log in as George. Hooray. I'm George. So you'll find that scary. Let's go to the projects now. Now, remember, George is not a member of this project, but it is a public project. So I should be able to run. Um, actually, let's make it a private project. Let's make it fail first. So if we look at the projects, uh, let's make this project private. So if I do um, Docker run, there we go. Okay, so we're now authenticated, but I don't have the um, ability to pull because, because the project is private and I'm not a member of the project. So the two ways to solve that are to either go to the project and add me, add me as, a, uh, as a guest. So we can do that. If we go to the project and um, add George as a guest, so George can now pull, but he can't push. And the same thing would have happened if I'd made that project public. So this is just a little bit of information about the various roles 
um, the, the, the various different uh, means of authenticating. So the final thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to run this exact same image, but using a virtual container host. So those of you who've seen my recent video on how to download and install Vic and a VCH may well be familiar with this command line. The Vic machine create command with some arguments. Now this is uh, the command line to install a virtual container host to my vSphere cluster with all of the arguments. But you'll notice I've added an argument onto the end here, dash dash registry dash CA. I'm pointing to my uh, certificate, the one that I downloaded from the Vic registry earlier. So let's install this virtual container host and let's try to deploy that exact same image to it. Now you'll see uh, loaded registry CA from uh, the uh, location there. That's verifying that it's picked up that certificate and it's associating it with this virtual container host so that we can authenticate with Vic registry. So the next thing I need to do is to point my Docker client at uh, the VCH, which as you can see, we, we this is successful. Okay, so let's try authenticating. I'm going to do that with the standard Docker login. I'm going to log in as me. There we go. Successfully logged in. Hooray. So now all we need to do is to try to run this image. So it's going to pull the image down from the project. Now it's going to create VMDKs from that image on the data store that I've specified. So it's a little bit slower than um, the overlay file system on Linux, but it's not horrendously slow. And then it should run the uh, image. And the way that we can double check that is we can have a look on the file system and see if our hello world file is there. So there it is. So let's do an LS. There it is, hello world. So we've successfully created a project and users in our Vic registry, which is here. We've successfully created a new image, pushed it to a project, and then pulled it from that project and deployed it directly to vSphere as a VM uh, using a virtual container host. Thank you for watching.